Hello, my name is Richard van Roost and welcome to this quick tip on how to use the cell fracture add-on for Blender. This is a very nifty tool to destroy your objects. So let's just dive into Blender and see what it can do. First, we need to enable the add-on. So go to user preferences, add-ons and search for cell. And there you have it, the cell fracture add-on. So let's enable it and go back. And for this example, I'm going to use a nice teacup. And I didn't model this myself. I downloaded it from blendswap.com. All this stuff is made by Jay Artist, and this is the cup I used. So thanks, Jay, for creating this and sharing this with us. If you want to use any of these objects, you can download it. And first, you need to log in, download it, and import it into your Blender scene. So let's just go ahead and go down in the object tools we can see we have a new button so let's just press this button and there we get a lot of properties and settings we can adjust but let's just first see what happens if we press ok with our object selected it creates a bounding box and it applies a Voronoi algorithm to the bounding box and then the Voronoi cells it creates are used to shatter the object with boolean uh, modifiers basically we don't see a lot of uh, difference but we get some new objects on the second layer and this is because the next layer is checked if our original object is on layer one the shards are on layer two and there we have a lot of shards and this is just very easy and it creates a basic destruction of your object but there are a lot more possibilities with this add-on so as you can see the, the shards are all about the same size and they're pretty basic so let's just select them all and delete them and go back to layer one and if you want to do some more advanced stuff i recommend you apply a subsurf modifier to increase uh, the amount of topology if we do that we have a lot more faces to work with and to show you what you can do with this I made a video as you can see here um, let me go back this is the the same cup and I used the cell fracture add-on to destroy this with a bullet so let's see what happens and I also um, used the fluid sim to create this coffee uh, fluid but let's focus on the cup and at the bullet impact you can tell there are a lot of tiny bricks and then here in the middle the shards are pretty big and then where the, the bullet hits we have again some tiny shards here so you can adjust the density of shards and this is all about the first panel over here you need to um, specify a point source and you can use vertices, uh, particle systems or the grease pencil and I use the grease pencil but first let me show you um, what it what it does um, so as I told before it uses the Voronoi algorithm to create Voronoi cells and these cells are used to create basically cracks and you can either use a particle system for example so um, you plug in particles like this and then um, the Voronoi algorithm um, finds these boundaries between particles so between those two particles it, it finds this line between those two you have this line and so forth and that will create Voronoi cells and these cells are used to destroy your object and you can also use the grease pencil and you can draw lines so I used uh, circles and what happens when you do when you do this is um, these in-between parallel cracks are created and also cracks like this going into the center 
creating a sort of spider web pattern like this. And you can also just draw points around this, for example, a few points, and this will create um, lines in between uh, the circle and the point, and in between the points, just like the particle system. So something like this will happen. So you can adjust the density of your cracks by increasing the density of your particles or your grease pencil drawing. So let's dive back to Blender and see what happens if we use the grease pencil. So press N and add a new layer. Um, select surface to draw on the object. And then, for example, the, the bullet in my video, it impacts at this spot. So hold D and draw a circle to create this nice spider web pattern. And then some points around it. This is what I used when doing this um, example video. And then over here, the bullet hits again. So do the same. And then uh, it may hit the handle as well. So do the same thing. You don't have to close the circle. It will work if you do just a line. And then over the rest of the cup, we need to create a few points to create some big shards. And this will create a nice effect like this. Okay, let's see what happens. Um, Let's just first look at these settings. So you need to, if you want to use the drawing as the point source, you need to select Grease Pencil. You can also limit the amount of shards. Um, so uh, for the video I used 200. And then you can add a new material to the inside of the shards, which is very nice. And I also use this in the video. You can see the inside of the material is uh, a bit diffuse and yellow. Um, to do that you need to apply or add a new um, material slot to uh, the object before fracturing. So let's add a new material and call it inside. And now I think we are ready to fracture this. So select the grease pencil, uh, increase this to 200 so for the material you want to select slot 1, index 1, this is index 0, this is index 1. So it will apply this inside material to the inside phases. And the rest is all fine for now, so let's press OK and watch the magic happen. OK, let's look at our shards. And as you can see, it creates sort of a spider web over here at the circles some really tiny shards and then the rest of the cup is nice evenly distributed big shards so this is how you create this kind of effect right now the all the shards are selected so you can use this to press uh, ctrl G to add them to a new group let's call it shards and let's check if the material is applied well. Right now it's just gray, but you can change the viewport color. And we see we have applied the inside material successfully. So let's snap it back to original point. And then one final thing, one great thing about the add-on is it sets up the physics for your shards so it uh, recenters the origin and it um, adds the mass based on the volume of your shards so if you go to blender game mode and the physics panel you can see the mass changes with the size of the particles based on the volume calculated so this is a very nice feature another thing you can see if we zoom in over here you can see it adds a gap between the shards and this is not 
a mistake. It's um, set by the margin, which is currently set to one thousandth of a one thousandth of a blender unit, and this will um, allow a more um, stable simulation. Because if you set this to zero, the the particles tend to um, get very jittery and intersect with each other. So this is a very nice way to make your simulation more stable. So to finalize this tutorial, let's just quick quickly look at what happens if we simulate this. So add a, a plane as the ground, go to wireframe, and let's press P. And you can see we, we need to increase the physics steps because some tiny shards fall through the ground. So if you increase the sub steps, you can solve this. And we can also record the animation. And let's press P again. And there you can see we have a nice simulation. And now the physics are recorded, so we can play this back. So this concludes the quick tip on how to use the cell fracture add-on. Uh, it's a very nice tool to quickly destroy your Blender objects. Um, I hope you learned something from this and can get started to create some amazing visual effects. If you have any questions, you can ask them below. I'm happy to answer them. And until next time.